Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have a really cool and different review for you guys from a new brand to the channel um, known as Waldorf or Manufacturer Waldorf. They were established back in 2015 and their kind of main, uh, I'd say, formula is combining Swiss design, German production, and Asian movements. So that alone um, kind of intrigued me. And um, so I was kind of happy that when they reached out, uh, I could take a look at this particular model. Now, in terms of the type of watch this would be, it's a dive watch. Some key common characteristics and design language when you're looking for a diver, you're gonna typically want water resistance through some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible, with a dive time bezel, um, and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelet. This is their Seawolf Everfrost, uh, which is the blue dial model. Uh, and it pays homage to the legendary USS Seawolf SSN-21 nuclear powered fast attack submarine, uh, which was made for speed, precision, and high performance. Uh, so that kind of ethos was reflected within the design and execution of this particular piece. And you can get these for $789 direct from Waldorf. And uh, they go, um, yeah. They, 789 not bad not uh crazy you know jump out their value but i think for what it offers it's pretty cool and it's very different uh, and that's one of the things that kind of drew me to it is that this brand is clearly trying you know they're 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 doing a lot here uh they're doing a lot of things that are different and uh i i just you know i gotta show my appreciation so with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer okay, look. Okay, guys, so as you can see, uh, it's gonna be a little bit on the larger side at 43 millimeters uh, with a 14.2 millimeter thickness, but the lug to lug is only 47.8, uh, although there is a, even though it is a female end link, it does protrude away from the case, just a touch there, but everything does wrap and drape very nicely. As you can see, there's a lot in terms of the design here, a lot of angles um, from that perspective, a lot of ornate details when you look at that dial. Um, and then you even have a lot going on with the feature set. Uh, up here by the uh, 12 o'clock, you actually have a really cool power reserve indicator, which I think is really nice. And they did it in a very trick way. Essentially, they have that hand nestled underneath a raised indice. So that is actually kind of cut out and recessed and placed in so it it just blends and integrates really nicely and yes this is a big hunky chunky dive watch which a lot of people like um of course a lot of people also like smaller divers and that's great too i try to you know bring different things to the channel and this definitely has a lot of different things going on for it the uh, crystal is a flat sapphire with AR coating, so you can see it's working really well. Of course, when you get like a straight on reflection from one of my studio lights, uh, it's gonna be tough, but you can see uh, generally you're getting a great look straight through that crystal. You have a 120 click unidirectional bezel. And it has great action. Now the grip itself is a, is a bit odd. Um, because it has flat points, but there's no like fine kind of uh, coin edge or anything like that. So it's really more about finding the flats. But even at variable speeds here, feels very precise, quite notchy and clicky while still remaining relatively smooth. So very nice, everything lines up really great as well. You also get, of course, that rotate, uh, that, I'm sorry, within the rotating bezel, you get a nice brushed ceramic insert, which is fully loomed. You also get a screw down crown, and it is quite a large screw down crown at that, as you can see here. Also, a helium escape valve, which they have even went through the trouble of uh, spelling out for you. And then on the case back, you have 
a really cool kind of deep stamped um you know shot of the inspiration for the watch which is that uh submarine so very cool and then of course ratcheting clasp so this thing is very very feature rich uh, which i thought was really cool and it looks different it doesn't look like other things out on the market it kind of has this like orient star meets oris aquis thing going on um and yeah i i was just like wow that's it's different and, and kind of cool and, and really interesting. There's a lot to kind of notice and appreciate. And uh, oh, let me give it a quick little wipe here. Um, as you, you know, your eyes run across this particular watch. And yeah, the movement inside is the 9130 uh, Miota. And it is, you know, it does the job and it also has the the extra complication which is nice i do also like the date complication as you can see there um at the six o'clock position it also um it kind of has that interesting geneva stripe textured blue dial uh which i can appreciate it i don't think they actually did that uh in terms of like did geneva striping and then painted it over or anything like that i'm pretty sure that is a um kind of stamped uh, texture that's on there, but still nice nonetheless. It has applied indices. You have, of course, that really nice, uh, well-framed, uh, I should say not framed, but recessed uh, date uh, application there. And with the way that the light is, I know it's probably a bit hard for you to see. I would say in regular conditions, of course, like I have lights off to this side and off to that side, but nothing straight on. Um, it's it's much easier to read in kind of normal lighting conditions here. It's, it's probably appearing to be a bit kind of cast into the shadows of the dial. I'll say in real life, it's not quite uh, that hard to see. It also uses a Swiss Tritec Loom that glows green. I wasn't able to get the full specification on it. Also, 300 meters of water resistance which is very cool. Um, honestly, you see sometimes watches like this and they're only 200 um, water resistance and it's kind of a letdown here. You're getting at least 300. So for the larger size, at least you're getting that. It kind of makes sense, I, I would say, scale wise and then in terms of the water resistant level. So I, I dig that. Um, also 22 millimeter lug width this nice stainless steel bracelet with a slight two millimeter taper. So it goes from 20 to 20, I'm sorry, 22 to 20. It has solid end links and links, screw in connecting pins as you would hope for. Um, and then you get down to this great milled push button ratcheting clasp. Absolutely does the job. Not the first time you've ever seen this clasp, uh, this type of clasp here on the channel. And, you know, it, it does its thing. So with all that said, let's get it on the wrist and see how it wears. Okay, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think it works really rather well. Of course, if you get it too close to the uh, camera there, you're gonna get a little bit of lens distortion. It's gonna feel a little bit large. But I think even the way that they spaced everything out, the dial to bezel ratio, it just works for me. It does wear very similar to something like an Oris Aquis, except you don't have those proprietary lugs. Uh, also, because of the um, the H links here, it's it's really it drapes really quite well. It feels very substantial. This is not meant to be, you know, some vintage esque uh, type of wear. This feels like a big chunky tool watch, and that's exactly what it is. So, you know, that's cool, and I think it's nice the way they kind of blended some more ornate kind of uh, classy details with it. You know, people really do like that idea of a dress diver and it kind of that level of versatility this is definitely more on kind of the tool side uh you know feeling very substantial and very chunky but i think the design wise the design language is actually quite nice and and very eye-catching um so yeah and you can see on the wrist it lays really well um yes it is a bit thicker uh, but not anything crazy, you know, 14 millimeters. Geez, I have 
some Seikos that are that thick, and they only are like 200 meters of water resistance. Uh, so yeah, this isn't bad at all. It's just kind of the way and the style of the way that it lays on the wrist, and then of course that kind of top hat-like uh, structure for that really nice uh, bezel. So with that said, let's go ahead and get it off the wrist, charge it up um, and do some loom shots, low light transition and work our way into some closing thoughts. Okay guys, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Oh yes, the loom game is strong with this one. Absolutely. And another kind of cool touch is that the power reserve hand is actually loomed as well, so you can get a good idea of how much time you have left in terms of your charge on the movement, not just your charge on the loom. So, um, although this thing has awesome loom, one thing I like to also work into these segments is some low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of times you're going to be you know coming in and out doors maybe walking underneath an overhang the shade of a tree or just spending time in your favorite automobile so it's nice to see how these colors these textures um, the finishes how they render in less than optimal lighting even some harsher lighting like you're going to see here right now which would typically expose any level of you know kind of factory defect within that finishing but you can see the finishing is actually quite good so very nice from that standpoint and the way that the blues really just let the light dance across the dial it's very cool and very eye-catching. You can see here that even that subdial, it just plays and pops, and you can see there's like a light kind of brushing underneath that, which ties into that bezel, which looks great. So very, very cool. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> A little dry, a little dry. All right, guys, closing thoughts here on the wrist, large and substantial, solid feel, um, very hefty, and but still very planted on the wrist, which is nice. Um, I've definitely had divers on that felt like they sat kind of a little bit too above the wrist. Um, this feels like it sits on the wrist and hugs the wrist really quite well, especially considering the size of the watch. Now, in terms of model variants, uh, you have also the Ice Fall, which is the white dial, and the Black Water, which is the black dial model, which is also available. Um, in terms of comparable models, there's a lot of competition in kind of divers under a thousand range, but I think these really make an effort uh, to feel a touch more luxurious. Um, and you know, if these featured something like Swiss movements, I could easily see them fetching closer to double this cost. So, uh, because they do the whole thing, Hey, Swiss design, German production, you're getting like a cool looking piece that is very, you know, well executed. And then you're just kind of saving money because it's using an Asian movement. So again, that's kind of part of their formula. So I can't really be too mad at them for that. Um, and yeah, I think it's a cool looking watch. It's different. I don't know if it would be, you know, your one dive watch, but I think in a collection of divers, this is absolutely a cool thing that does some things a little bit different. And I appreciate that because there's so many watches that are getting released that just kind of all look alike, especially when it comes to anything in that kind of vintage big crown esque style. It's nice to see a modern diver that is you know, bordering on some kind of classic undertones um, and really elevating kind of the luxurious nature of it in terms of like it wanting to look expensive. And it also having specs that would make you think it should cost a good amount of money. 300 meters of water resistance, uh, brushed uh, ceramic bezel inserts, the you know the german construction again so there's a lot to like here so if you like the way it looks i think you really enjoy the way that it wears um, but ultimately that's you know that's kind of up to every one of you so for me guys the bottom line here is while this is not for everyone um, i think 
excuse me, uh, those that can appreciate it will get a lot out of these. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely a lot to enjoy. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Thank you.